All right, guys, so I've been a challenger player for over five years now, and today I will give my guide on how to play Riven in Season 12. Today's guide is focused around the best runes built in skill order as well as spells and an explanation towards early game, mid late game, team fighting, and also a gameplay commentary. Now to start off with the runes, there are currently three rune pages that I recommend in Season 12. The first rune page you will be using in most games is the Scaling rune page. This rune page makes you incredibly strong during laning phase due to all the ability haste you receive and also makes you scale very well towards mid late game. You'll be using this rune page mostly against bruisers and easy matchups. The second rune page I recommend is very similar. This page includes Transcendence and Nullifying Orb. You'll want to pick this rune page against AP top laners or full AP team comps. Even when they only have an AP top laner, I still recommend you to use it. The third rune page I recommend includes Scorch in it. This rune page gives you more damage and is usually taken when trying to get kills early. If you are in a hard matchup that barely allows you to trade, do not take this rune page. You also have more rune pages that include Domination in it and Resolve. However, they are very situational and in most cases not needed at all. Now moving on to Riven's build, there are four builds that I recommend in Season 12. Beginning with the starter items, I highly recommend you start with a Dorn Shield against any kind of matchup that pokes you a lot. The amount of heal is crazy early and makes hard poking matchups a lot easier. When you are in a Bruiser matchup or champions that can all in easily, go for a Doran's Blade. This will make you more tanky against all ins and give you a tiny power spike early on. Finally, we have the Longsword and three pots. This will be your go to starter item in the most of your games. This will give you early raw damage and a lot of pots to fight early. I recommend taking Longsword sword into any matchup without much poke or all lane. It's also your go to start item against all easy matchups. Now as for the full builds, the four builds that I recommend right now is the snowball build. You want to go for this build when you are in an easy matchup or when you are already ahead in the game. This build will work perfectly in most games. Secondly, we have the build that counters full AD team comps. If you're facing a full AD enemy team, you must always go for this build. It's a high damage, high armor build that fully counters AD comps and make you unstoppable towards mid late game. Next build we have counters full AP team comps. You'll want to run this build whenever the enemy team has incredibly fat AP mid lane or when they have more than 3 AP champs in their team. You do not need mercs in this build simply because Maw gives you enough resistance and survivability. Lastly, we have the build versus full CC. If the enemy team has a lot of champions that include a huge amount of stuns, make sure to run this build as being permanently CC'd is one of the counters to Riven. There's also a few situational items like Chainsword. I definitely recommend this only against team comms with a lot of healing. Again, you can build this into any of the four builds that I've just mentioned. Now for the skill order, there are two options. You typically want to max Q, W, and then E in almost every single game that you play. The reason why is because you gain a lot of more damage, a lot more wave clear, and you get a lot more stuns to use as well. You typically only max Q into E and then W if you are facing off matchups that require a lot of mobility. Now as for the summoner spells, it's quite easy. You just want to go with teleport and flash every single game. However, if you want to take a little bit more risk, or you're facing off champions with a lot of healing, that's where you could also go for ignite and flash. In the early game during laning phase, you want to look out for short trades. One of the most important keys towards winning lane is to fight whenever the creep wave is in your favor. Look for short trades or all ins whenever your creep wave is huge. And if your opponent plays very safe or it's simply not worth fighting for, look into pushing and roam. You want to create advantages even in the smallest ways. Whether it's roaming mid or getting jungle camps, Riven has so much mobility and damage early. There are so many ways to get ahead. 
When it comes down to playing Riven in the mid late game, it's all about getting catches on the side lanes and constantly applying pressure and pushing on the side lanes. Whether it's top lane or bot lane, you're looking to get kills, you're looking to get every single jungle camp for yourself, being able to use that damage to clear everything out and get a lead that way. It's also very good to look into flanking the enemy team on the back. However, if the team fight is really bad or the situation is really bad, I suggest you go back to farming once again. Now, most importantly, you want to be looking into splitting when your teleport is up. And whenever it's down, you still want to split push. However, you want to be looking into flanking or possibly starting teamfights more, especially when the objectives like Dragon or Baron is up. When it comes down to team fighting with Riven, I always focus on doing the most damage possible and at the same time taking the least. And the way how that's done is by kind of playing Riven in a hiding playstyle where if your abilities are up, you go in, you pull the damage, and then you back out whenever your abilities are down and then you go back in whenever they come up again. This is why it's crucial to have a lot of ability haste on Riven because the main damage doesn't just come from your auto attacks, but it actually comes off of your passive and your combos. Now, with everything being said, let's actually get into a gameplay commentary and I'm going to show you guys exactly on how to play Riven. All right, guys, today I'm going to teach you guys how to play Riven top lane in Season 12. So, um... The runes that we're running this game is Conquer. We're taking Triumph here, Alacrity, Last End. For this game, we have Gathering Storm and Transcendence. So we're uh, we're playing with the uh, scaling the rune dog. page. Now we're currently facing off Aatrox, which is a decent matchup. Like he definitely pokes us quite a lot, but we definitely do not need Dorn Shield in this matchup. Also, a very quick mention, we are currently playing with Ignite and Flash right now. The reason why is because Aatrox has a ton of healing. And if we go for Ignite, we can basically reduce that and make the matchup a whole lot easier. So, nice try. So, we're going to be looking into getting the pressure on Aatrox so we can maybe fight in level 3. I've actually wanted to like cheese him level 2, but he's already been like hard pushing the wave in with his Q, so we don't have that option. Whenever you play against Aatrox, you always want to be looking into getting the pressure on him, getting the push on him. It's incredibly important because it allows you uh, to create like other opportunities. Nice try, we shield that. Oh, we missed that. He's gonna go for this yes here, probably. I'm just gonna auto this a few times. Unfortunately, like we did lose like a lot of uh, a lot of CS to make that trade. Was not how I planned it out. I tried like taking the cannon with my auto and then Q. So you can kind of tell like the way how trading works. It's very simple. Whenever Aatrox decides to go for a CS or it gets really close to my farm while the wave is like pushing towards him, I use that to my advantage. And trying to get like the perfect trade out. You can also like trade like this on her tower as well, which is really good. So there's a ward down over here. We already have some vision, but I'm just preparing it in case Fiddle's gonna come the other way. Go for another trade. He has his Q up as well as the W, so we gotta be he we gotta be very careful here. My Seems like Fiddlesticks is currently on the tri bush, so we don't have to play support sound anymore. So yeah, you can really see like what it takes like trade properly in lane on like how to be efficient. Darkness fades away. Now we can kill him. He's low enough for us to kill him instantly. Um, he does get the bone plate back very soon. So you see, like, a champion like Aatrox, who's supposed to, like, hard counter you by poking you constantly. Even against Aatrox, you can play very smart. Avoid loads of his Qs. And ultimately, like, play around him with short trades. 
Fiddlesticks might be topside because he was walking down inside the jungle. Perfect. We can probably dive him under tower right now. Wait a second. And we got him. So just like that, we're getting an easy kill. And we can probably kill Fiddlesticks as well. And he's dead too. So yeah, you can kind of like tell the way how Lainey works with Riven now. It's always about short trading consistently. Um, and looking for the short trades and eventually like all in with Ignite and Flash. Um, unfortunately though, we do have to wait for like getting pushed on towards us, but we must go back either way. Go way back. So, luckily for us, we're not losing the whole wave, which is very, very good. We're only losing the, the cannon at most. Yep. But we have the whole other wave, so whatever. Let's push up this wave. Or before we do, actually, I'm just going to be stacking up the wave, because maybe we can get a really good opportunity here. I'm just going to play very slowly. I do not regret that which must be done. Perfect. Now we just wait here. We just chill around. He's walking in, sure. We do not have my ultimate yet, but we do have the wave stacking up completely, which is going to be very favorable for me. Doesn't matter if he hits it, because we have the option to go back here. So even if the trade was really bad, um, well, sort of what it is now, we can just go back. You now that's like the beauty when you stack waves down. Like, the bigger the wave gets and the harder you push that into your opponent, um, the more options you have, because you can say like, okay, you're like stacking the wave up, you start like pushing it into the tower. You can backboard, you can roam, you can like go down to the jungle camps. Like, there are multiple options for you to play it out. I will light the sky with my blade. So Fiddle is walking topside again. We can probably try to kill him when he goes for the blue. I suppose we can try this out. Wait a second. The dawn is coming. <laughs> Never ever have I seen a Fiddle that does not take the blue buff at this time. I don't know what he's doing. Oh, now he takes it? Well, that's really unfortunate. It really, really unfortunate. Let's try. And now we all in him. That was the easiest, like, Aatrox ultimate I've seen in a while. He panicked so hard. He panicked so hard, man. I was about to press R into him, actually, but... He panicked really, really hard. Okay. I will rise above the shadow. Let's push this out once again, and then we can reset. Next time, he isn't going to have his ultimate anymore. That's going to be pushed in. He will likely freeze up the wave. Nope. Okay. Cool. Let's go back once again. So, so far in laney phase, we're not necessarily too far ahead of him. If it comes down to farming, it's actually quite decent. Because we've also been fighting Fiddle before. We've been trying like an attempt at like killing Fiddle at the blue, which also failed. So the only thing that kind of worries me now is that we've been kind of like behind in terms of farm. We should have had like a little bit more. But aside from that, like we are, we got a tiny lead up over Aatrox. But the beauty is like we're also outscaling Aatrox at the same time. Like Riffin outscales Aatrox incredibly hard. 
Once again, he's going to play it safe. This is good for me because, once again, I can create opportunities where I can roam or potentially get, like, camps. Now we just wait. He's got bone plate though. We have to be very careful about Fiddle. I'm just warding there just in case about Fiddle, but apparently he's coming from here. Chaos offers false freedom. <laughs> yeah, that's Fiddle. I think he's gonna bomb over the wall though. Ah, decent at most. Fiddle's, uh, Fiddle's currently not here. He just showing up at uh, at Fager. Unfortunately, I'm not getting like the traits off that I'm looking for currently because the wave is like being um, pushed in like towards the tower too much. So I'm unable to get the traits down that I'm looking for. Like, that's the only thing that doesn't make me happy, man. We've been trying to get the traits out against Aatrox. Missing, like, a couple traits as well. And that's how we managed to win a few. If I did make those traits, it would have been fine. And if I did hit those traits, it would have also been perfect. But, uh... It was, like, right on the edge twice in a row, actually. Now we get some more plates. That's going to give us a nice advantage as well. We're getting pretty close to my Gorge Inker, but we still have to get a bit more. We ignite this one. And we got him. So at the end of the day, we um, we just push our lead again. This guy is, have, is struggling now. I'm going to come back with a Gorge Inker, and that's going to be like the end of the laning phase for me. Um, I would like to stay for more, but Aatrox TP is currently up, so I'm being forced to go back anyways. So, the next item we're going to run is going to be a Black Lever. And then after the Black Lever, um, we're going to go for Chainsword. And the Chainsword is going to counter Aatrox, and it's going to counter, like, Fiddlesticks with the healing as well. And a little bit of Samurai because she's also like going for a shield bow at the moment. Order and virtue guide my this guy's forcing plates. There we go. Oh. Sidestep. We wait for my combo to come back. And we got him. There you go. So like I said, like usually in matchups, especially like Aatrox matchup, um, at some point you're just going to outscale him. And you know, of course, we are also having a lead on Aatrox already. There's a fiddle right behind us. There's nothing he can do though. As much as he tries, we're getting plates for free now. If he walks in, we just kill him. Because we have like a three level lead. Like the best time frame to Olney would have been now. Because we used up my abilities. But even then we just tank him anyway. And got it. So once again we're going to go back here. Seems like Fiddle 6 was actually here. <laughs> this guy's dead. Or... Yeah, it's done. So right now, next thing. This is the most fun part because now we're getting now we're getting to the mid game. Um, what we're gonna do this game is focus around pushing top lane and getting every single camp we can find. And at the same time, we're gonna see if we can farm down mid and get catches. Oh, you're lucky today. Maybe we can bait him. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not gonna try. He's got the he's got this item 
This uh, Crown of the Shatter Queen. That item is such a perfect counter to Riven, honestly. It's like the perfect item to, to, to be playing with. Let's push the next wave afterwards. Whoops. And we go back. I wish we could like continue pushing, but it's still risky because we don't have like vision in across the entire jungle. So what we can do is like farm down uh, this game, uh, the red buff, and we can farm this down. And then at the same time, we can path like back topside and take all of this stuff down. And see if we can like fight the Aatrox at the same time. This guy's going for a fight. Let's drag it a little bit. We don't have... Uh... Oh wait, never mind. Oh, I want to take this camp now. Um, before I do, however, we're going to go mid so we can prevent this uh, Vagor from getting the tower. He ran up here somewhere, so we can try and catch him. Okay, he's back. So, Aatrox might be here. And we go top again. Yeah, he's got the uh, he's got the bounty on the tower now. I think he's gonna get it, but it's okay. Well, I think he might not actually get it. Okay, he does. Never mind. It's okay that he gets it. Like, it's not an issue, to be honest. So, after pushing down this wave, I'm going to see if I can get, like, one more, or at least two more camps. We know the Fiddle is currently in bot lane, taking the camp. So I'm going to see if I can take down the wave here and get the camp here and here as well so I can push my lead a little bit. I hope it's here. I hope it's uh, it's probably taken already. It's pretty likely. Oh, it's respawning now. Cool. And we go back. In theory, we could like stand over here and we could try to like flank the Aatrox, but uh, we have got to get Yasuo to do that. So once again, doing the same thing on repeat. We're going to go back to uh, this camp right now. And we're going to farm out um, this camp possibly. And then we're just running back topside and we'll be fighting this Aatrox unless... He shows up mid. Which he does, actually. I'm gonna go back to mid. I'm gonna push down this wave now. Like, opportunities wise so far, we haven't really had the greatest opportunities to do much. There's loads, loads of farming involved in this game. Okay, running down ball lane. We're gonna flank these guys in the back. They have vision. They know I'm walking down here. Never mind. They got vision. Oh, he apparently used it. Find peace in the light. And we go top again. So you see, like, we, we are not really able to get the opportunity so far. We are, like, farming out mostly and... From the times that I've been trying to roam, we've been constantly being countered by um, by a bunch of like wards and everything. But I'm pretty sure like eventually we will get our chance to like get something done. Also, a sharks ran away at like the perfect time.
And I'm assuming that Fiddle's here like somewhere as well. Even Fiddle like cancelling the backboard. This is being pushed so I can push mid now. Drake is spawning like 15 so we can take that. The beauty is that Aatrox is farming topside while Drake is respawning so it's going to be a free one. Oh, you will press R. On that. If my team goes back to mid now, we can probably start a team fight. Hmm. Aatrox is pressuring top once again. The, uh, the enemy team plays it so safe, man. Like, I can't count the times I went roaming down to mid and bot lane trying to flank them, but they uh, they keep playing it so safe. Even drakes, like, we've managed to get three drakes for free because the enemy team is, like, chilling in base, like, literally. They're not moving out of, of their... Uh, of their position. Which is not bad for us, to be honest. We're getting free drakes. We have, like, we're out farming them completely. We have, like, pressure literally everywhere. I, do not regret that which must be done. I can push this one for free because we know where people are. And I'm assuming that they're going to be topside soon. Once again, like a wave dropping here. That's apparently jumping into Yasuo. <laughs> Whoa, everyone's like spamming Yasuo here. Well, we got him. Or, well, we don't. This will be a very slow game for sure. Like, we're not getting opportunities. Let's walk around. Ah, we got to escape it. Trying to force the ones we are unable to do. So I had to use it. Even they have vision there. Okay. Once again, Aatrox getting more kills. It, it sucks to see that everyone is like dying to Aatrox right now. Let's get my chainsword. So next item will be a Guardian's Angel. And then the final item is going to be... Uh, it's probably going to be a Grutch or QSS. Nice. Back to pushing bot lane. Most importantly, we're gonna have to do this consistently. Not not making any mistakes like we do now. Like so far, game wise, we've made zero mistakes. And as long as we keep playing like this, we will at some point we will win. CC forever, by the way. Maybe we can force him right here. That sucks. Okay. Well, another opportunity we're losing here. Okay. Aatrox once again topside. This is actually a very, very, very sad game because Aatrox is just splitting and we are having so much pressure in the game and yet we are like unable to force anything. 
really sucks to see, to be honest. Okay, back to doing it. Drake spawning in 25. We need the team to, to get this Drake. It's gonna make a huge difference. And it's already I already called out for the Drake. Okay, we got it. Perfect. He will steal that. And we got the four Drake. You see, like, we end up, like, we're gonna be winning this one for sure. We got, like, four Drakes right now. That's gonna make a huge difference. The CC is pretty incredible, though. I did like no damage. The uh, new item is super broken. Like the new, uh, what is it called again? The Crown of the Shatter Queen. This thing is like super OP. I hope that my team is going to defend Topsa for me. Go back. Once again, HR splitting, splitting, splitting. Just all he does is split. It's not bad, to be honest, but like, definitely never seeing him in team fights. It's only annoying for us. That's, you know, that's all. So now let's push this out. We're, ha we're, we're definitely like, uh, the, the main way like how we're playing this game out is just by pushing things out and clearing the, the things we can find and constantly looking into like flanking the enemy team. It's pretty much all we're doing this game. Constantly flanking, 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 just whatever, you know, whatever situation. I always find a way to like get on, on, on the back of their team, you know. Well, that's Aatrox. You could probably create a nice opportunity here. You could probably kill him, like, on our tower. Okay, there's an Aatrox over here. Got him. Um, the only problem is for tanking everything. I'm getting blue. Once again, enemy team just pushing down mid lane. Doesn't matter though. We could be taking Baron right now for free actually. Uh, we gotta get Baron. We also should not be chasing down a fiddle. We should be taking the Baron right now. Would have been way better. Uh, I don't think that Yasuo realizes that we're taking a Baron here. It doesn't even look like he knows. He's just patting down anyways. But like, thankfully it's working out like this. Apparently it's already taken. Let's go back. So the final item will be a QSS because, I mean, for a simple reason, right? They have uh, Fager CC, they got Fiddlesticks, and they have Leona, so... We gotta get something to get rid of that CC. We don't necessarily need to have Mercs. We just time my QSS properly, we should be okay.
Here it comes. <laughs> Ten years later. <laughs> Ten years later. <laughs> I was actually standing there for millions of years. Finally. Wait. Okay. And either way, like, this is a clean, clean game. And I will play Riven Top Lane. Thank you for watching today's YouTube video. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.